Welcome to the Chop Man tutorial series. Based on the beloved classic arcade game Pac-Man, this project was created to be an easy to follow step-by-step -step guide that would give you the tools, techniques, and experience of creating a full game from start to finish. We have made all the original assets that we created for the game completely free. Links in the description below. For this project, if you wish to follow along step by step, you will need to first download the Chopman project files, both of which can be downloaded in the downloads area of the tutorial site or from links in the description. In our last video, we created the core functionality and mechanics for both our character and our ghost response system. In this video, we'll finish creating our enemy ghost variants and implement the ability for the ghost to change colors when the player eats a power up. With that in mind, let's begin by creating the remainder of our ghosts. We'll begin with our level 1 scene. We'll go to our red ghost prefab, and in our state graph, let's copy the nodes located in the movement eaten flow graph. We can now go to our blue ghost super state and paste them in the eaten flow graph of the blue ghost. We also need to change our is red ghost 8 to our is blue ghost 8 boolean. Keep in mind, since our ghost is a prefab and isn't in our scene and can access our scene variables, we'll need to copy and paste the name into our set scene variable. Once we finish setting up the eating state for our blue ghost, let's now go into one of our ghosts and we're going to create a new super state and we're going to call this state enemy state. Let's toggle the state to start and go inside of our enemy state. Once inside of our enemy state, let's rename our start state to normal and create a new state and we're going to call that scared. And in our normal state, we simply want to set the skin mesh render to the material of our ghost. Let's now copy these nodes and paste them in our scared state. However, in our scared state, instead of changing our ghost material to their color material, we want to change it to a scared material. So we need to create a new material object variable, which we're going to call ghost scared material. And we're going to change this to a material type and we're going to get our scared material. And once we have our scared material variable created, we're going to set this as the new material for our skin mesh renderer. If you don't have a ghost material, we can simply duplicate our normal ghost material and rename that. And for our emission, we can simply place our scared blue ghost emission. Next, we'll create a transition from our normal to our scared state and a transition back from our scared state to our normal state. Inside of our transitions, we can either use the nodes from the transition from our chase to scared, or we can place a custom event inside of our chase to scared transition to send to trigger our enemy scared state. With our enemy super state complete, let's now copy that over to our blue ghost as well. And let's change our variables inside of our enemy state to match our blue ghost.
If you use a custom event instead of simply an update, you also need to copy or create the custom event nodes that were in the movement state. Next, let's go into our main ghost state and let's duplicate our red ghost super state twice. And we'll name one ghost orange super state and the second ghost pink super state. Let's now make a transition from our picker state into our orange super state as well as our pink state. And in these transitions, we'll simply have a Boolean check for the is orange ghost Boolean and our is pink ghost Boolean respectively. Next, let's go into our, our new super states and reassign the variables that affect that particular ghost. With all our variables set, let's now duplicate our ghost prefab and rename them for our orange and pink ghost, as well as set the boolean value for each ghost. Now that we have all our ghosts created, let's go into our stage manager and into our level picker state. Let's now duplicate and rename the spawn points for our blue, pink, and orange ghost. Next, we need to create an object transform variable for each of our new spawn points.
Once that's complete, we need to create an application variable for each one of our ghost prefabs, as well as a scene variable for our instantiated ghost objects. We can now duplicate our red ghost instantiation node set and set them to match each ghost and their spawn point. With our initial spawning system complete, if we were to press play now, we will most likely get an error where some of our ghosts don't seem to be moving or even getting their material color. If we look into the states of our ghosts, we'll notice that each one seems to have an error message. The reason for this is it's trying to get our variables for our enemy state at the same time those variables are being set. That said, we can easily solve this problem in one of two ways. The first way is to simply go into our enemy state, set our on enter as a coroutine, create a wait for seconds node, and put a very slight delay that won't even be noticed by the player. This will allow all of our materials to be set before our set material node is activated. The second way is simply taking our on enter state off our off toggle start and simply placing it after our material generation state. So instead of using the coroutine in a wait command, we can simply connect our enemy state to our material state and at the end of our material state after it's finished setting our materials and variables, we can simply use a custom event trigger to fire an off event once all our variables and materials are set. When working with state machines, it's extremely important to keep in mind the order in which your states will be activated. Setting a state off that relies on another state normally results in errors or unexpected outcomes. With our states now set in the correct order, let's hit play and test out our functionality so far. We can now see that each one of our ghosts are being spawned, their colors are being set. Something to note is, 
if at this point you're still getting errors in your states, instead of using a mesh render set material node to fix this, we can use a render set material node instead. Additionally, if you experience the issue of getting your power pellet and only one of the ghosts change colors, in that situation, we need to ensure that we have our ghost scared material variable as well as it's setting to be the value for our ghost scared material. If this is the case, we can click on our prefabs to make sure that we have our ghost scared material set. Since our ghost scare material is an object variable, we need to create it for each prefab object if it isn't in our prefabs. In the next video, We'll finish developing our player respawn system if the player is killed and our ghost respawn system if the ghosts are eaten. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be the first to see this and many other tutorials, game development tips, interviews, and free game asset giveaways.